بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continuing on in our study of basic fiqh especially the issues of tahara the issues of purification in the book Umdat al-Ahkam by Shaykh al-Maqdisi rahimahullah ta'ala and may Allah have mercy upon all the ulama of Ahl sunnah throughout all time we reach the hadith on Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal إذا شرب الكلب في إناء أحدكم فليغسل سبعا ولمسلم أولاهن بالتراب وله في حديث عبد الله بن مقفل أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا ولج الكلب في الإناء فاغسله سبعا وافره ثمانة بالتراب Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, this hadith illustrates for us the how we should purify the najasa or the impurities of uh, of dogs. So if we come in contact with a dog, for example, regardless of what kind of dog it is, that if the dog licks our utensils or drinks from our utensils then we must wash it as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if uh, a dog laps from the container of one of you then wash it seven times and then in another narration in Muslim the first time with Tarab and then in the hadith of Abdullah bin Mugaffal radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if a dog drinks from the container of one of you then wash it seven times and the eighth time with uh, tarab, with uh, sand in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we learn how to purify our utensils in case we come in contact with a dog. And that if a dog licks, for example, your drinking uh, utensils or your forks or your knives or uh, comes and eats from your plate of food or what have you, then you must wash it, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, seven times. And the first time being with Turab. And then in the other narration, it's as uh, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying uh, that you, you're washing seven times with water and the other time with the dirt. And the scholars, they illustrate for us or they indicate for us that the washing that is most... Uh, properly done for the in order to purify those utensils is that we use the tarab first that we use the dearth the clean earth first so for example if a dog licks and or drinks from your water container then you throw out the water because now it has uh, impurities in it and you take that water container or that glass or cup and you clean it out with clean earth. You wipe it down, you clean it with clean earth one time. Then seven times with water. And then there you will have followed the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he commanded alayhi salatu wasalam that he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam إِذَا شَرِبَ الْكَلْبُ فِي إِنَاءِ أَحَدَكُمْ فَلْيَغْسِلُهُ سَبْعًا So he said Sallallahu Rabbi wa Sallam wa alayhi He said that if a dog uh, drinks from one of your containers then you should wash it seven times and then of course in the other narration of Muslim we mentioned Ullahunna bit turab the first time with turab so this is actually uh, eight times that you're washing it you're washing it once with turab and the other times with uh, 
with uh, the fir- the first time with with dirt, and the other times with water to purify that. And then in the other hadith of Abdullah bin Mugaffal, where he said that if a dog licks or, or takes from one of your containers, then wash it seven times, and that you should uh, wipe it the eighth time with Turab. So from those hadith, we can also deduce, as the scholars deduce, that and and then putting a gem between those two hadith that the best tartib or the best order is of course to wash it with dirt first purify it with dirt the the utensil and then washing it uh, seven times with water and this is following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam some of the benefits from this hadith and uh, first and foremost some of the differences of opinion of the scholars of Islam. And one of the issues that they differ with regards to this is, is it an obligation to uh, have tartib, to have order with, as I mentioned, the order of using the dirt first and then the water. So the scholars, they differed over whether this was the correct order, was this necessary, is it an obligation to clean with dirt first and then water. And that, uh, as I said, they differ and some of the scholars, which it appears to be the strongest evidence and it even with regards to if we want to apply our, our intellect as well in this, although this is an action of uh, ta'abudi, uh, this is an action of worship, this is an act of worship, because the Prophet ﷺ is illustrating for us and commanding us to uh, on how to purify our, attention, our, our utensils if they are uh, tainted from the uh, najasa of a dog. So... Uh, as we've learned from our scholars that it is better to use the dirt first and then the water. Some of the other the benefits Sheikh Ali Bassam Rahimullah Ta'ala he mentioned with regarding uh, regarding this hadith he said one of the things is that it illustrates for us this, the level of najasa the, the, the deep level of najasa of the dog because the dog is mentioned here in this hadith, that you must wash the utensils that he, uh, that the dog has uh, licked or uh, drank from seven times, and the first time with dirt. So that shows us that it's a a, a very strong level of najasa. That there's a, a lot of najasa or a lot of impurities in the licking or uh, in the tongue in the mouth of the dog, of, of a dog. And that Islam calls us to purification and so that we must try our best to remove those impurities. Another uh, benefit from this hadith that Sheikh mentioned, he, he mentioned that also this doesn't just include, of course, if the dog laps from your, your water or your something, if he eats from your container or what have you, it's all najasa. It's all included in this hadith of the Prophet wasallam. Also, he mentions that it is an obligation uh, to wash where the dog has licked and seven times, as, as was mentioned in the hadith, and of course the first time being with Turab. Uh, in addition to this, some of the other uh, benefits the Sheikh mentioned that if uh, a person uses, for example, that uh, that if a person uses the water mixed with dirt, then also this could, so in actually, in actuality, it would be like a mud, using mud to purify that this is also uh, permissible. Some of the scholars also mentioned 
uh, some of the classical scholars like Imam Ahmed, uh, um, uh, and it's uh, one of the opinions of Imam Shafi'i, and uh, also it is well known from his madhab that if something else that's pure uh, that's pure uh, is used, then it is also that it is also uh, permissible to use, for, for example, if a person, if you use soap instead of dirt, according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed, and according to one of the opinions of Imam Shafi'i, according to his madhab, and then there's also another qawl in his madhab that says that you must use specifically turab, uh, dirt, then, it, then it's permissible to use, for example, soap or something else that purifies. So this is according to some the madhab of some of the scholars, whereas it appears, although the Sheikh hasn't mentioned, but he mentioned those two madhabs, he didn't mention Imam Malik, but I'm assuming that Imam Malik, and, and he does mention that Imam Noah, he says, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, that that uh, you must use Turab specifically, that you cannot use something, even soap or even something else that's pure, you cannot use it in the place of Turab. So, and they mention their, um, their hikmah or wisdom behind this, or their reason for behind this, their illa, is that that this is an action of ta'abudi. That means that this is an action of worship. It's an act of worship and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi ordered to use turab so following exactly as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that is an act of worship so you cannot change that act. So this is the call of for example Imam Nawawi and some of the other scholars uh, some of the other classical scholars and according to some of the other madahib. And those are just some of the benefits that we gain from this. Uh, a, a last mas'ala that we'll bring up and that some, they make a type of uh, reasoning, qiyas, with the, the dog between the dog and the pig, they say, well, the pig, um, pigs are also najasa, and that which comes from them is najasa. So if a pig were to lap from your container or uh, lick your garment, you should also do the same. And those who hold, uh, uh, say, some of the, scho the scholars say, or some of the scholars say, that this is, uh, this qiyas is ghayr sahih. This is not, this is an incorrect, um, comparison because uh, in this hadith the Prophet ﷺ specifically mentioned the dog he did not mention another animal so we should not make uh, qiyas from that so even if a pig were to lick from your container it would only be necessary to clean the container as you normally would remove something that's impure by using water and soap or what have you that it's not necessary to do it seven times and the first time with Torab as is mentioned in the Nas is mentioned in the text of the Prophet Sallallahu with regards to the uh, dog and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.